Hello, my friends. Don't worry. I'm going to do just a, a very short uh, presentation. You're going to see uh, the man himself. What's his name? Dallas Jenkins. Dallas is going to explain uh, everything about The Chosen. He's going to explain. I think this is not the first time he did that in the past as well. Trying to explain to the naysayers uh, that uh, The Chosen is uh, nothing more then uh, what it needs to be, a show that presents life of Jesus, a show that presents life of the, uh, all the disciples. It's not a Bible uh, in images, but obviously uh, they have uh, this um, artistic uh, interpretation. They are artists, they are actors so uh, they allow imagination as well to fill in the gaps uh, where uh, the bible doesn't say everything they will come and they will fill in the gaps this is uh, as i said a short introduction watch the man himself Dallas jenkins explaining again to all of you naysayers because i've had this video on my channel with uh, jonathan uh, being happy about the success invited on false news and so many naysayers and not as many, to be honest with you. You could count them on one or two hands. <laughs> the vast majority, uh, they were super excited about The Chosen, about Jonathan. So, see the video with Jonathan explaining once again for everyone. And then we're going to meet for final thoughts and uh, final um, conclusion from uh, my behalf. Yours, Pizza. God bless you all, my friends. Love you all. Enjoy Dallas Jenkins talking and explaining again. See you very soon. Right after Dallas Jenkins. Hey, I'm Dallas Jenkins, creator of The Chosen, and I want to take a moment to address what may be the most important issue of this show for you and other viewers. And that is, what is The Chosen's approach to scripture and faith, and can you trust it? Now, this video is, for lack of a better term, somewhat of a statement of faith for The Chosen. So if you have questions or concerns about the show, or if you have a friend who's on the fence about watching the show because of similar concerns, this is the video to watch. Now, right off the bat, I want to make something very clear. The Chosen is a narrative show, which means it's not a documentary. It's also not a church. It's not a nonprofit ministry. It's not formally connected to a denomination or faith tradition. And it's absolutely not a replacement for scripture. It's a show. Now, however, that's not to diminish the importance of getting things right. We have an obligation to take this seriously. We're talking about the Son of God here, a show inspired by Holy Scripture. And you have legitimate questions or concerns when considering something like this, especially when you've seen plenty of media about the Bible that's been problematic or insulting, or when you didn't know who was directing the project and if they shared your values. It's important for you to trust who's involved, and we get that. So since this project was conceived, we've seen a litany of questions or criticisms raised, which is to be expected. Some of the most common issues brought up include that there are non-believers involved in the cast and crew, or what about adding the show adding I'm sorry, what about the show adding to scripture? Doesn't Revelation say we're not supposed to do that? And even though I'm an evangelical and I'm in charge of the content, we've got some evangelicals upset that there's some Catholics involved, we've got some Catholics concerned that I'm not a Catholic. Some are concerned that there's some Mormons working on the project, including at the distribution company, and some of their Mormon friends are concerned that they're letting an evangelical control the show. And then, even within the evangelical community, there are the concerns about the wording of some of our materials, from the title of the show to various memes. And they'll be asking, are you a Calvinist, or are you a modalist, or a Trinitarian? <laughs> you can look up some of those terms later. Now, people care about this stuff, and we love that there's this much passion about this content. And just so you know, we take this show very seriously. In the last year, several of us went to Israel to research and prepare, and God pressed very hard on my heart, as well as the others, that this was one of the high callings of our lives. And God made it very clear to me that I must take the responsibility of telling the stories of his people with extreme care and dedication. Now, speaking of me, even though this show isn't about me, more on that later, I am the captain of the content ship, so let me give you a quick backdrop. I've been part of a conservative Bible-believing background my entire life, 
and I was a Bible major in college. I believe the Bible is the Word of God and that it needs no improvement. And the consultants I talk to and run things by also all believe the Bible is the Word of God and needs no improvement. And as I said before, but it bears repeating, this show is not a replacement for Scripture. And we make that very clear up front before episode one. And when we add historical or cultural or artistic context and backstory into the show, that changes nothing about the Bible itself. The Bible is the Bible. Scripture is Scripture. Now, I happen to be an evangelical, so as I mentioned, the show isn't connected to any formal church or religion. But of course, this show is about a Jewish man and his Jewish followers, so I'm going to stick to their stories and not try to impose my faith tradition over it. But with that, let me share with you some of our guiding principles, the bedrock foundations of our approach to this project. Number one, between the cast and crew and our distribution and marketing teams, there are over 200 people involved in this show. And we obviously don't demand that everyone connected to the show comes from an evangelical perspective. We don't even demand that everyone is a believer. As long as the content itself is faithful, we're less demanding with those who help deliver it. Think of it this way. If season one was distributed by a Hollywood studio, that wouldn't make the content better or worse. Judge the content. Think of great projects of faith you love, whether it's a great faith-based movie or a book or even the Bible itself. Like, for example, if you wanted the Bible, the Word of God, delivered to you or, say, to the people of Iran, would you be upset if the person who printed the ink onto the paper disagreed with you on theology? If you found out the person who drove the delivery truck wasn't a believer or came from a different church, would you trust that Bible less if you heard that the person who bound the leather was from a different, uh, was from a different religion? What if the person who delivered it to another country made tremendous sacrifices to get this project and this product to people who needed it and came up with amazing solutions and delivery methods you couldn't have come up with? Whether it's a Bible or a movie or a book, would you be less grateful if you found out that they, did, that they differed with your theology or weren't even believers? Of course not. And that's our approach with The Chosen. The content shouldn't compromise. And the quality of the people and the work ethic of the team shouldn't compromise. But whoever on the cast, crew, or distribution team will help us achieve that goal of delivering an uncompromised, impactful show with high quality and get it out to the most people possible, regardless of their faith background or lack thereof, I'm thrilled to work with them. And I can tell you, our cast and crew and our distribution and marketing team have sweat and bled and cried for this project. They want this project out to every corner of the world, and they are making it happen. And unlike most distribution partners, ours don't require us to change any content. They're thrilled to distribute what we make. That is extremely rare, and we're very grateful. Number two, our process in the writing of this show, the creation of the content. First, we consult the Gospels. I hope that's obvious. Even though the Bible isn't the only source of history or culture of first century Galilee, obviously, our first and primary source for this show is the Gospels. Then there's a lot of prayer involved, as my co-writers and I, as well as my family, want to make sure we're humble and listening and not arrogant about the best approach to these stories, and prayer helps us do that. Then we run our scripts by our Bible and cultural consultants to ensure biblical, historical, and cultural accuracy as much as possible. Which brings me to number three, which is that this show isn't based on any religious tradition or particular faith perspective. It's based on the stories in the Gospels and on history. Our questions as we approach each storyline are not about denominational considerations, they're about the following. If the scene is from the Bible or history, we ask, did this happen as we're describing it? And if we add something artistic or creative, we ask, is this plausible? Does it fit with the character of the people involved, and at least the intention of Scripture? And if it does, then we believe this show can be a great tool to enhance the love of Scripture for viewers. Why do we believe that? Because we hear every day from literally hundreds of people who say that they've never been more passionate about Scripture since watching this show. Number four, when I'm constructing the content of the show, as well as all our behind the scenes and supporting content, I am not trying to please or seek the approval of any one person or group, including commenters on social media or critics, and there's been plenty. I've been called a heretic for working with people of other faiths or traditions, or for sitting down to discuss the show with them on video, and I've been called a blasphemer from some members of those other faiths. 
So when you're concerned that I'm working with someone or talking to someone of a different denomination or faith tradition, believe me, they've got people who are asking them why they're working with me. But I'm okay with that. As long as I'm doing the right thing before God, I don't mind being criticized. The only one I'm seeking the approval of is God, and many times my wife. And you don't have to agree with some of my decisions or some of the decisions of our team, but as a viewer, you should at least know that these decisions were taken very seriously and were considered and thought through and prayed over well in advance. So while I'm not seeking the approval of others, wisdom and humility dictate that I consider the perspectives of consultants and those I worked with. Now, I mentioned earlier that we have consultants. They include a Messianic Jewish rabbi, a Catholic priest, and an evangelical scholar. You can see them in our Bible Roundtable videos. Now, that's not about seeking approval, as they and we obviously don't agree on everything. That's about seeking information so that we can make rational, informed decisions. Plus, in the case of our Bible Roundtables, it's really fascinating to hear the different perspectives. I've loved these videos, and we think it'll be interesting to you as well. One bonus in all this is that so many times during this project, I've learned something new about different denominations that was different from what I've heard before, which is exciting, not dangerous. One of the joys of working on this show has been learning about the different perspectives, while at the same time discovering how many people of all stripes truly love Jesus. The debates and the disagreements are rarely about the stories of the Gospels themselves. And if this show does nothing else but encourage respectful discussion, that'd be great. That does not mean compromise, however, which is why I focus more on the stories than on the interpretations of those stories that came later. I want to close with a very important point. Ultimately, the show needs to speak for itself. You should absolutely judge the show and make sure it doesn't violate your conscience or contradict the character of Christ or the intentions of Scripture. I know I do. But if it passes the test and you love it, then stay focused on the content and not on the flawed people who made it, including me. I'm just a flawed man and filmmaker trying to tell God's stories in a fresh way. And this show, like me, and I'm sure even some of my personal theological perspectives, will be imperfect. Which is why we're trying to avoid religious tradition and just focus on Jesus and on making a great show. That's the closest we'll come to getting it right. But be assured, we hope to be doing this for the next seven or eight years and maybe more. We have taken very seriously our responsibility to get this show right, and also to get it to the world. And so far the process has been so challenging, we've been forced to be humble every day, and that's a good thing. We promise to maintain that humility for the life of this project. And we hope that if you trust us in this process, you'll partner with us to deliver this show to the world. Thank you. So, my friends, now you've seen the man. He took 10 minutes out of his time. I know he's very busy. He's getting ready season three for us to enjoy. But he had to take this uh, extra 10 minutes just to address once again the naysayers. He has nothing to hide, as he clearly said it. He doesn't do this because, uh, I don't know, he's forced by someone or something, but he wants uh, everyone to have their heart at ease. Now I know, you cannot please people. I don't know if you work with people, but I do. When you work with people, you realize that you will never be able to please them. I do my YouTube channel as well. I'm outreaching to people. Some they are nice, so many are nasty, some are trolls, some they encourage me, some they want to put me down. Some that do not agree with me, they will call me names and the list carry on and on. Dallas as well, he knows that. He is in this business, uh, after allow me to put it this way, to work with people that is not going to be able to please everyone. He has a, a visionary mind. Uh, that's how I see him, not just me. All of us, uh, the chosen fans, see Dallas Jenkins and uh, the producers and everyone involved in this project, the investors. I, by the way, I've seen on my channel, there were two lovely people, uh, a lady and a gentleman, 
original investors and they are so happy that this uh, is successful. There is a hunger for God. It's not uh, like someone said uh, they are uh, for money and they want to get rich. It's not about this. What uh, made Dallas start this project was his desire to outreach, his desire to make a difference. Just like his dad, Jerry Jenkins, uh, that did the books uh, Left Behind, if you remember, that's the legacy of his dad, uh, powerful legacy, hundreds of millions of books printed all over the world, where everybody knows Left Behind. Now, Dallas Jenkins, he wanted as well uh, to have his own legacy. And he does, and it just starts. I know that God has a, something big to do with this project. I think this TV show is going to be more successful than Games of Thrones or any other godless uh, enterprises that uh, Hollywood and uh, the affiliates uh, are uh, throwing at, at us, uh, throwing in our face, calling that entertainment. Well, you don't need entertainment. I want to see something that will fill my heart. I want to see something that will inspire me. I want to see something that will make me think. I want to see something that uh, will bring tears in my eyes, tears of joy. It's like when you, you see something wonderful, beautiful, you think about that for days and days and weeks, sometimes even months. That's the effect that the chosen has on us. And uh, Dallas Jenkins here, he had done his best to try once again to tell to all the naysayers that they have nothing to worry about. All those uh, accusations that the show uh, brings um, uh, this um, Mormon theology, which it doesn't. Different accusation that uh, the show uh, will go towards Catholic faith, uh, which um, it doesn't. Uh, then uh, calling Jonathan, um, well, uh, Dallas is not talking about this, uh, but some, uh, I don't know, I think this is craziness. Some, they even say that uh, Jonathan might be Freemason. I mean, uh, they attack the show. I think they do that out of uh, pure uh, ignorance, some hatred, because the show becomes more powerful, more influential. Um, it outreaches to many more people, hundreds of millions of people all over the world, and the show grows. Look what happened when they had this brilliant idea to uh, first the first two episodes from season three in the cinema. What a brilliant idea, isn't it? They end up being uh, position number three at the box office. So uh, it feels good, isn't it, to see the name of Jesus being again proclaimed and respected there is a vacuum there is a vacuum in the heart of people people want to see awesome entertainment i know that the world is hungry to see and to hear about god before christian movies they lack a lot they were done sloppy there was no substance in them even uh, movies about the life of the Lord, they, except the uh, Passion of Christ, which, uh, you know, it was controversial as well, an attack from the left and from the right. So except that, um, I couldn't see something. Oh, and Franco Zeffirelli as well. Come on, uh, Jesus of Nazareth, uh, Franco Zeffirelli it is a masterpiece for sure. But there was this vacuum and never, ever, never, ever anyone had the courage to do a TV show about Jesus' life. In a movie that uh, has only a few hours, it's very hard to, to compress everything and to speak about, um, I don't know, the humanity of Jesus as well. Oh, by the way, someone, again, an naysayer was saying on my channel, they presented Jesus just like a simple human being. <laughs> Jesus was a human being and a God in the same time. 100% human being, 100% God. So he has, Dallas has to speak about both sides, but the human side of Jesus, human side of our Lord hasn't been explored as much. That is the truth. 
So he wanted to speak about this as well. Naysayers mm-hmm. will be there always complaining about something, criticizing, trying to destroy. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a, a thing called a constructive criticism. Constructive criticism comes along when you want the project to move forward. You want that to be successful. So you will criticize, but you'll bring ideas. You will say, look, this is wrong, but let's do it this way. I think this is the best way. But people I've seen on my channel, and not only the haters, those that uh, they make a hit piece on Dallas. Oh, look, he said that us and Mormons have the same God. Did he really say that or not? Oh, look, Jesus, I am the law. This is uh, something that uh, they took from the book of Mormons. But uh, what is wrong in uh, in uh, Jesus seeing uh, this show say he is the law? He is really the personified law of God. He is bigger than the law. The son of God is the Lord of the law. Why he ate with his disciples uh, in front of the Pharisees on Sabbath because he is greater than the Sabbath. He is the Lord of the law. So uh, you naysayers, I know, whatever we say, uh, you're still going to carry on being uh, as you are, having your own ideas, um, carry on attacking the show. Some of you naysayers maybe will convert to (laughs) being a part of the chosen army. You're always welcome to come and join us because what we do here is to be happy. What you do here is to lift each other up. And many times you don't see differences anymore between us. Differences that denomination and human beings are putting between us. Someone said, this show is so much evangelical show. It's not an evangelical show. It's not a Catholic show. It's not a Mormon show. It's a show that wants to be faithful to the scriptures. A show that wants to... to show yeah can i can i repeat show the show <laughs> to portray more in depth about the lord about the disciples and to bring in front of us all this so we enjoy so we be touched but more important than that so we get a hunger for the bible i know many people that without this show without the the chosen they would never ever be interested in the bible or even in jesus there were artists that watched and they said very very interesting this is dear jesus can you imagine this to have this kind of impact on also on people that uh, by definition they will attack your faith they will not want to hear about God or Jesus or Bible. That's the effect that the chosen has. You know, when the Lord was hungry, do you remember that example, my friend? When the Lord was hungry, he was so hungry and he wanted to eat dates. He saw that the, the fig tree, actually, it was a fig tree. Yeah? It's true. He saw the fig tree and he wanted to eat. There was nothing in there. So he was so upset that he said, May you never bear fruit again. And the fig tree, boom, dry out, died out. The same goes here, my friend. This fig tree called the chosen enterprise brings fruit. You see people having their life changed. You see people having hope when there was no hope. You see people having the desire to live again. You see people that were severely depressed coming to God and saying, after they watch, I can see myself in that character. Do you remember Natalia under the fig tree? He wanted to build that uh, amazing temple to to give honor to God. But uh, then that accident happened and everything was collapsed. And uh, he lost his job and all. He was uh, so down. He was so broken. He went under the fig tree. And then he said, Are you hearing me? Are you listening? God! He was desperate. How many of us were in that situation? I imagine someone watching that beautiful sequence from the show and identifying himself, herself with Nathan. Then uh, if we move uh, 
Paul, why do you say that when the Lord said, I saw you under the fig tree? He said, oh, you are. Rabbi, you are the son of God. He believed. Do you believe uh, because I told you you are under the fig tree? Yeah. We're going to see bigger things than that. Just uh, one instance, moments in which um, you can identify yourself with the characters from the chosen. It speaks to your heart. It gives you hope and desire to open the Bible. To know more about the author of this amazing book, which is the Bible. To know more about uh, the one that uh, the chosen uh, in the end proclaims. And the chosen proclaims nothing else but Jesus and Jesus uh, coming, being one of us, dancing with us, laughing with us, making jokes with us. Yes, my friends, this kind of Jesus that laughs with us, always uh, feeling with us. And when you see it, the Jesus portrayed by Jonathan Rumi in The Chosen, you feel that this is your friend, not just your God. This is your friend, There's someone that you care deeply as you see him displaying his humanity. We forget that 100% he was as well human being without sin as he was 100% God. Once again, Jonathan Rumi, Making an amazing job as uh, Jesus. I remember Jonathan speaking one time and saying uh, how challenging it was and how overwhelmed he felt to play this role. Well, all of us are human beings and to play such a role, uh, it's a daunting challenge. You have to let yourself go completely to allow the Holy Spirit to take over every single part of your being. Not easy. We have our humanity that drags us down. Not easy. We are imperfect, sinful human beings. Not easy. Again, thank you so much, Dallas, for taking a precious time out of your busy schedule. Just to give us some peace to those that have concerns. Some they have concerns that they consider legitimate. And they will listen to what you said. But others, like what I've seen personally, others, they, they're not really interested in helping. All they want is to destroy. They even say that this Jesus here in the Chosen is an ecumenical Jesus. How come they reach to this conclusion? What is ecumenical? They are faithful to the scriptures. Maybe they are disturbed by the, the fact that uh, there is no more uh, division and uh, enmity between uh, evangelical, Catholic, Mormons, uh, even Jewish, they come together and they deliver this show. They put aside their theological opinions and they deliver the show. Isn't this the way that it, everything should be done? Especially when you do something for God? In order to deliver the final product, perfect, spotless, you work together. You work together. Togetherness, isn't it what Christ wants? He wants us to love Him with our mind, with our soul, with everything that we are. And uh, nothing else will matter. Not our own theology, not our own church, not our own denomination, not our own pastor, not our own limited understanding what does it mean to be a Christian. We come together and we serve Him. There will be a time when he comes back and all this nonsense ends, all this division, all this political system that is collapsing in front of our very eyes, this world is dying <sighs> in sin and sorrow, sorrow and injustice. This is uh, the result of us self-governing. We put God aside. We didn't want it to follow. We didn't want to follow. We wanted to have our own way. But then we brought God into equation when we needed him. But only when we need him. Then the rest of the day, the rest of the week, the rest of the year. God is not a part of our life. It's just when we remember. The Chosen comes. And thanks to Dallas Jenkins and all the others. Jonathan Rumi, Paras Patel and many names that They bring the gospel. And the gospel becomes alive in front of your very eyes. 
Dallas once again speaks to all of you that have concerns. Listen to what he has to say. In the end, uh, no one will be able to, as I said, convince anyone of anything. But uh, our duty is not to convince or to try to convince, but to present the truth. To present the truth. This is my comment to what uh, Dallas uh, Jenkins did in this video that you seen already. I don't know how many of you will have the patience to watch me as well speaking after Dallas. It's okay. It's fine. Watch him only. Only if you want to watch me so you understand who I am uh, and why I'm so passionate about the Chosen and why I support the Chosen. I support Dallas. God bless you, Dallas Jenkins. God bless you. All of you guys, Jonathan and Paras Patel, God bless you. I love you honestly with all my heart. Thank you, guys. If you enjoy, if you like what I'm doing, if you are from the Chosen Army, you know what to do. Let's support each other. This channel is dedicated to serve God. And I am a big fan of the Chosen, as you've seen it already. See you soon. And thank you to all very, very much.